Hey guys, today is a simple video. I'm gonna show you two easy ways that you can improve your grading with just a few adjustments. So the first one is adding contrast and how to work with that with exposure. You maybe have seen that in some of my other videos as well, but now we'll see it again. And the other one is color separation. So we're gonna talk about those two. I'm gonna show you the same technique on three different clips so that you are convinced that it works. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and get started. We're inside DaVinci and these are the three shots that we're working with. One of me in the forest here in Winter where I'm trying to look very cool. One at the beach with my friend Gret from Bali and actually another one from Bali as well, but this one is a drone clip. So that's why I thought to include that one as well. So let's start with the first one, hide the clips here. And for the first part, we're just gonna make our base grading. So I'm gonna make a few notes and from a recent comment, I'm gonna make sure to label them so that we understand what we are doing here. And we're not gonna do with this one. So this will be our basic grading. I think that should make it a little bit easier. The first note is gonna be our C log three to DaVinci wide gamut. And this one down here is gonna be our DaVinci wide gamut to rec 709. And this one is going to be our exposure. This one is gonna be our color contrast. This one is gonna be our contrast. This one is gonna be our separation. And this one is fine with color contrast. Okay, let's see if we're gonna need these two nodes. I don't think we are. First thing we're gonna do up here is drag in a color space transform and we are going to convert it from cinema gamut and c log 3 to davinci white gamut and davinci intermediate and then i'm going to copy it to the other one just so i don't have to drag it on again go from davinci white gamut davinci intermediate to rec 709 and gamma 2.4 easy peasy converting it from pretty much C log 3 or to Rec 709. You don't have to use the DaVinci white gamut color space that we're working with in here. You can just apply this last one here, make it C log 3 or whatever your color space settings are for your camera and convert it into Rec 709 gamma 2.4. But this is my workflow, so this is how I do it. Now, before we move on, I will just make sure to copy this grade onto the other ones. And the only thing I need to change for the drone clip is that this is from DJI, so it's in D gamut and D lock. So that will change that and should be okay. Let's move back to the first one. And the first way that we are gonna talk about is adding contrast. So now we have a shot and we can see that it is pretty overexposed. So we move into the contrast curve and this is the first thing that I always do. So I'm gonna add pretty harsh contrast here, which will just make it look even more overexposed. And then I'm going to adjust my exposure. Just gonna adjust the offset down and voila. I think we have something pretty good. Let's adjust the highlights a little bit like so. And with those two adjustments, we went from this to this. So I think that already looks really good. That's super easy to implement and play around with the, with the contrast. I think we can soften up the shadows a little bit and soften up the highlights as well. Just makes it look a little bit more cinematic, if you will. And then for the contrast as well, moving into actually in between the color separation and the contrast, we're gonna do a trick here on the curve. So I'm gonna go to the blue channel. I'm gonna hold down option. And then for our shadows around here, I'm doing it a little bit further up than I usually would because I can see in my curve that I don't have that much in the shadows and we might change that in a minute. Then I'm gonna push some more blue into the shadows. And what you can see now is that the shadows kind of turned more green as well, more blue greenish, you've got that tint. I'm gonna do the same thing for the green, hold down option, drag so the point so that it stays in the line. And do the same thing here, but not as much with the green one. It kind of creates this teal tone in the background that we see here. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So 50 here is zero. So I'm gonna turn it down to 90, 90, just to make sure that the strength is not as much. And if we go in and see here, you can see that this is the shot before, it's pretty cool. And now we just got a little bit more of a teal tint in the background, in the shadows for everything. And it kind of just gives us a little bit more of separation. Then we're moving into the red channel and that's where we have to be a little bit more careful. Putting down a point in the same spot, 
but the red is way more aggressive. So when we start pushing that into the highlights and the midtones, it's gonna be a lot more. So I think around here will be good. And then we're gonna turn this down all the way to a 55 to make sure that it doesn't do as much. You can see that we warmed up our highlights and our brighter areas, and we've cooled down a little bit of the shadows down here. So those have a little bit of that blue tealish tint. And already now you can see that the separation is helping us a lot. This is only this one note with these few adjustments that you can see here is creating more separation. So our subject is now a little bit warmer, which is me in this case, and our background is cooler. So that separates the subject here a lot more from the background and makes it look a lot nicer. And in general, the shot is a little bit cooler now. So what we wanna do now is we wanna go into our color separation. I'm just gonna turn on the link here again and use that later. And then we're gonna jump into our primaries. And what I wanna do here is, actually I think I wanna go up to my exposure first. And I just wanna decrease the lift a little bit just to create a little bit more contrast like so. I think that looks pretty good helped us a little bit with our color contrast here as well. And then we're gonna create a little bit more of color separation. So for the lift, I want to push a few blues into the lift, kind of like what we've just done with the color contrast separation up here. And I'm gonna push a few grains into it as well, but not as many. You can see now our shot is very cool. That's okay for now. Then I'm gonna remove one red. And now it looks very cool. This could actually be a look as well, but I think it's a little bit too cool now. Now I'm gonna try and do sort of the opposite on the gamma. So I'm gonna remove three blues. I'm gonna remove one green, and I'm gonna add one red. And what that does is that now it create, creates this pretty cool look. I'm not sure I like this exactly. So we're gonna tweak it a little bit and see what we can do. I think removing the green, or actually we need to remove a little bit more green. So like so, we're still at negative one, but that helped a lot. So now we are back to kind of a more neutral spot, but if we turn it off, you can still again see that this is a little bit of a cooler shot. And now it's warmed up in the highlights, or at least from the gamma side, and it's been cooled down again in the shadows, but it makes the subject stand out a little bit more. It made the shot a bit warmer. We could go in and now adjust and make it even a little bit cooler in the background and then remove some more blue here from the gamma, turn off the reds a little bit more as well. And you can see you can just play around with this. And this is of course part of the creative process. So you can do whatever you want and tweak however you like. I think the skin tones look pretty cool now and both these looks are pretty great. Maybe actually it is a bit too warm. So dial it back one and I like the shot. And we haven't really done much. We haven't done a lot of color grading, a lot of color creation. We haven't even been into the curves here. We've just done a few adjustments, making the contrast, lowering the exposure or adjusting the exposure, making this color separation in our custom curves here. You can see that still makes a pretty good effect. And then separating it even further with the primaries here. So that's basically all we've done with these. So now let's continue and do the same process for two more clips, just to kind of dial it in. We're gonna do it for this clip as well. I think we're gonna use this as our hero frame. So for the contrast, pull down the contrast here, pull up the highlights here, then go into our exposure, primaries here. Gonna turn up the offset a little bit, or quite a bit actually. Then I'm gonna turn down the left, and then the gamma some up this is a bit of a tricky shot so i'm usually playing around with this quite a bit until i'm satisfied so i think this is a pretty good look so we just gone from this and that's after it's converted to rec 709 to from this to this so i think that's for starters at least pretty good let's go in again unlink our curves we are on the color contrast curve now go into our blues Gonna make a point here, just when the shadows start, just after. Gonna push some blue into that. You can see that it gets more teal down here. Same thing with the green, hold down option, make a point. Add a bit more of that teal tint. I'm gonna turn it down to 90 again. Just don't want the effect to be as strong. And you can see it kind of 
gave everything, it took away some of all that blue-ish color and just made it a little bit more teal. Now we're gonna go into the reds, do the same thing as we did before, push a little bit more red into the shot, but not too much, I think around there. Turn it down to 55 and there we go. Just warmed up the highlights and the midtones a little bit. You also see that in the background here. And then cooled down, or kind of like, I think we evened it out even a little bit. So it's more teal now, but I think it blends together in, in the shot in general a lot more. Go into our color separation here. Let's do the same thing. So let's add some blue to the shadows and a green, two greens as well. You can see this teal look, I really like that. See what happens if we move a red. I don't think we want to do that. That looked a little bit odd. I'm going to remove three blues from our gamma. Remove two greens. I'm going to add a red. Maybe two reds. No one. And you can see again here, this is turned off. And this is turned on. A lot warmer in the highlights and cooler in the shadows. And now this is maybe a little bit too cool. So we could add another blue and another green and then add another red up here. And then just kind of tweak it until we like it. But I do think the warmer highlights here looks a lot better. And that's coming from a shot that before we thought this looked pretty good as well, or at least I did. And now I think it looks even better. Then we could go in and tweak all our colors, but this is just to show you the small improvements that these can do. And as you can see, we're doing very little. We're actually getting quite a big, big effect. So let's just see what we did on this shot entirely. This is what we came from when we converted to Rec. 709. And this is what we got now. Even just ignoring the exposure changes. This is after the exposure changes and this is what it looks like now. So just to show you, I think that looks pretty great. Last one, just to show you that it doesn't only work on my Canon footage. Let's do the same thing here. Contrast, linking that, creating some more contrast on this shot. So, got to be a little bit careful with this one, I can see. Going into the exposure, I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit here, the offset. Then I'm going to decrease the gain to get some more detail back in the sky. I'm going to increase the lift again a little bit and then narrow the gain until I'm satisfied with the look. I think this looks pretty good. Then maybe increase the gamma a little bit and then further decrease the gain. I think that's pretty cool. So just looking at what we did, we came from this to this with some more added contrast. Let's try and make the same curve here, unlink these, go to the blue one. I go around here for this one, I think. Push in some blue, Oop, that was too much. Go to the green channel, do the same thing. Holding down option for that point, that's a bit much. So turning it down to 90 and then moving into the red one. Holding down option, making our point, and then just pushing in some red. You can really see how that's affecting everything in the shot. I think that might be good. Pushing it down to 55. And we've just warmed up the shot a little bit and separated the shadows. And for our separation here, push some blue into the shadows, some greens as well. Maybe even remove some reds, let's try that for this one. Doing the offset here to begin with, remove three blues, remove two greens, and then add even more red. So I think actually just adding the two red back. Again, warmed up the highlights and the midtones quite a bit. Now the skin tones on this shot is a little bit too strong right now. So I definitely think that that needs to be changed, but in general, I think it's subtle, but we just got some more contrast in the shadows versus the highlights and everything. And I think this was shot at sunrise. So I think this kind of glow that it gets now without being overexposed, without being too much is pretty great. And I think even like throughout the entire shot, it looks pretty good. So we came from this to this in just a few adjustments. So that's it for this video, guys. Just wanted to show you these two tips that you can use to, or two ways that you can use to improve your color grading quite a bit. It's subtle, it looks subtle, it's very small adjustments, very small changes, but overall in the look, I think it makes a huge difference. And if you start by applying these smaller adjustments, I think you'll get a long way to improve your color grading in general and get a much nicer and much more pleasing look without stretching or 
pushing things way too far. The only thing we're really pushing in these methods are the contrast, and that's to get that more contrasty cinematic, if you want, look. So that's basically what we were trying to do with this one. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something as always. And thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, comment, that should be comment, beach drone. Comment beach drone down below. I know that you made it all the way to the end. And either way, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. And until the next time, take care.